This video will cover creating and viewing elevations in a Revit project. So the template you start with typically has four exterior elevation tags placed and you'll learn in a moment how these directly tie to the four elevation items showing up in the project browser. If we select the pointing part of an elevation tag we see a line show up that basically shows us the extents of what we see in that view. So if there were anything over here, we would not see it because this line does not extend that far. If we um, click on the main body of the elevation tag, we see that there's an opportunity to check these other boxes and create additional views looking in other directions. Uh, we won't do that at this time. With that pointing part selected, we have the ability to uh, set far clipping. So right now there's no clipping. If we turn that on, we can set it to clip without a line. And now we have the ability to control how far in to the model we see. A good example would be to do it on, on this side. If we set far clipping to clip without a line and we pull it past the building, when we switch to this east elevation view, we see the entire building. If I close this view and click that pointing part and pull this back so that this lower roof area is not within the far clip plane, then that part of the building does not show up. You can also see it's a little awkward because there's not a uh, the full roof showing up here. And that's one of the reasons I picked clip without a line. If it were set to clip with a line, we'd see an odd situation here which is not really accurate. It looks like this is the actual top of the roof. So we want to do clip without a line. And then we'd have to switch back and see if we could get it. If we didn't want this other part of the building to show up, we'd have to try and see if there was a, just the right spot we could adjust it to, to get the ridge to show up. And it looks like there just quite isn't. But in this case, we'll just show the whole thing. Now, if we were to select one of these tags and delete it, we get a warning that not only are you deleting this tag, you're also deleting the view from the project. So watch when I hit OK, you'll see this south elevation item go away from the project browser. So that could be bad and you can always add another elevation tag looking at the south side of the building, but what could be bad about that is if you had notes and dimensions uh, set up in that view, they, those would all be deleted. So in this case, we'll select Undo to get that to come back. If we want to add new elevation tags, we go to the View tab, and then we select the Elevation tool. And you can see the default right now is Building Elevation. So as we move this tag around the building, you can see it automatically turns to point at the building. So maybe we wanted a an elevation just looking at this wall. So I go ahead and click. I'll select modify and then I pick the pointing part again and you can see how it automatically kind of stopped at this adjacent wall and, and then went out just past the edge of the building. So if I double click on the pointing part I can see that wall. I could pull the crop region down and as soon as it passes levels that aren't that don't go through the view anymore, those disappear. If I didn't want the level to show up, I could go into VV and on the annot annotation categories, I could turn off levels. And I could turn off the crop region so that doesn't show up. And then I could also change the scale. Maybe this is a blow-up detail of something special going on on this particular wall. 
So this elevation tag is now added and, and actually in and of itself defines the uh, what the actual elevation looks at. We can also add interior elevation tags, so we'll select that same elevation tool and in the type selector we'll pick interior elevation tag. Now this really only does two things different. It makes a different looking symbol and it also created a separate category for interior elevations in the project browser. The first thing you should do after placing any kind of new view or creating any kind of new view is to rename it because the default name is too generic. So this might be the, the loading dock north elevation. We can uh, again double click on that pointing part if we want to open it but before we do that we'll click on it so that we can see that it automatically found the, again the two adjacent walls and the view depth is out past the, uh, that, the next wall. We're going to click off of it because we can't have it selected when we double click on it. Again you can see um, the height needs to be adjusted so we can pull that down to the bottom of the roof above and we can also go into VV here and turn off levels in the annotation category we could also point pull the bottom of this crop region up so that it doesn't show the floor thickness. And then at this point on the annotate tab we could um, add dimensions if we wanted to. We can adjust the location of the text for these dimensions. And we could add notes as well. And then this typically is notes are typically 330 seconds so we could change that also in this interior elevation on the annotate tab we could embellish this view a little bit with detail lines so these are just 2D lines that are only going to show up in this view maybe we want to show a, a floor base this might be typically something that would be too detailed to actually model three-dimensionally. We can also add things um, such as filled regions. So if we want an actual pattern to show up, we can, we can do that. We also have several different types of patterns to select from. Maybe we're highlighting a a uh, plywood area for power panels to be uh, attached to or something like that. Another option instead of filled regions is a masking region so maybe we don't want the uh, gypsum pattern to show up where the baseboard is so I'll select the rectangle option and now that I've already defined the area of it I can just use those points to pick and now the hatch or the uh, filled region is, is being hidden by by the masking region. So that is a quick look at the elevation tool in Revit.